Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA Network Plus certification training course, the online training course that likes fast cars and high adventure. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to talk about network monitoring. We're going to discuss from our N10-004 exam, section 4.4, why we would be doing this network monitoring and how we would go about identifying the performance and the connectivity issues when you are dealing with networks in general. We're going to go through packet analysis tools, connectivity software, and we're going to go through ideas about using logs and how you can use logs in a very large environment, especially with many diverse technologies in place. Let's start by discussing how we could just make sure that we've got the connectivity that we need to work on the network. So a very common way to verify connectivity is with a program called Ping. You've probably done this before. The program Ping was named after active sonar pulses, where sonar was sent out. And if you got a bounce back from that device, you knew that device was there. And it works exactly the same way. It uses a protocol called ICMP. Internet Control Message Protocol. You send an ICMP packet to a device as a request. And what you're hoping is if that device is turned on and it's on the network and it has the proper IP addressing, that it sends an ICMP response back. Very, very simple, but it's very useful just to make sure that you know you can access that IP address. Another useful utility is called Traceroute. If you're ever in an environment where there were multiple routers between you and another device, the Traceroute program will tell you exactly the routers that your route takes, that this packet takes to get between point A and point B. It uses a the same ICMP protocol. It uses an ICMP message telling you that your time to live has exceeded. And so it's using a capability within the IP packet called TTL, time to live. And as that time to live goes down, we, we add one to it just to see how far we can get through the network. And every time it expires, we get a time to live exceeded back. We add one more to it and see how far it gets to the next stop along the way. So very simple in how it works, but the information it gives you is really good. Here's a trace route output. From my machine, I went to Google. And it did a name resolution for Google that found out a, that resolved to www.l.google.com. And it resolved to 74.125.67.99. Now, the first route through here is through my router, which does not respond to ICMP timeout succeeded. But once it got through my router, it connected out to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 other routers. So there's 15 routers between me and Google. Who knew? But Traceroute shows us every step along the way the routers they take. What's interesting is we also get response times. How long did it take to get a response back? And we get one response, two response, it tries three times to that router. So you can get an overall idea of how quickly traffic is going between you and that other site. And notice I went, I went uh, my router here, two, three, four, five, there are five routers just in Tallahassee. I hopped to Alabama. I went to Dallas. I came back to Atlanta. And then finally to wherever Google is, somewhere probably in the Atlanta area. We went all about there just to get to Google. And without doing a trace route, you would have never known. But look at all of that information. If one router along the way goes bad and it starts dropping packets like this one did right here, then you may want to call your provider and say, I've got a problem communicating out to Google. The response times are very high or I am losing packets. And it's at this router I start losing packets. Now I can go to that router and see what the next step is and start troubleshooting my link. Let's say you want to watch the packets as they tra were traversing the network. A very common way to do that is to use a program called Wireshark. You can get this from Wireshark.org. And it is a packet analysis device and packet analysis software. You load it up on any computer, and you can now watch the traffic going in and out of your computer across the network. And just going out to Google, for instance, I got all of these packets that showed up on my machine. So there's a lot that goes back and forth. You can learn an amazing amount of information just by watching the packets go through the network. They will ultimately tell you everything you need to know. They tell you about the connection. They tell you if somebody's authenticating properly. You can see response times as you are going out to these devices? What's inside the application itself? Are there conflicts on the network with two devices talking to each other? Are there botnets being involved, so security aspects? Just a huge amount of information there. It takes a good bit of training to get a lot of detail and understanding about what's inside the packets and how you should use it. But if you're in a scenario where you must understand exactly what's happening to and from a computer, a device, a router, a switch, your packet level analysis is the perfect way to see what's happening. In larger environments, before you roll out an application, 
you sometimes will have the luxury of doing a lot of testing for that app. And one of the things that they'll do is do load testing, where they want to see how much can that router handle? How much can that server handle? This application itself, when we start cranking it up with hundreds of users, what type of response time should we expect on our local network, on our wide area network? So you'll start to do a lot of what-if analysis with load testing. There's a very broad uh, arm of testing called load testing where we can do a lot of different things. And so it doesn't matter if you're testing switches or workstations or servers or databases or just the code that you might have written. It's a great way to determine, based on a long period of time, the exact response times, for instance, and the average response times or exact throughput of the network. If you want to put this application out at a wide area network location across a WAN, do you have enough bandwidth to be able to handle the load for 10 people, for 50 people, for 100 people? And you may be able to do some load testing to help you understand exactly what you should do to your network to be able that it runs successfully. Whenever you're trying to back into a problem and understand what's happened over time and historically get a perspective of what was happening inside of a router, inside of a switch, inside of a server, you're going to want to look at the logs. And fortunately, almost every device on your network probably has a log in it. So routers, switches, firewalls, servers, and many, many more devices out there will keep a list of things that are occurring on that device. Sometimes the logs can be very verbose. Sometimes they can be very generic and very, very general. Here's the log from the booting of the uh, Professor Messer website. So you can start to see information about what's inside that machine and understand when it was booting, what process did it go through. Now there's also a problem with this, of course, is that if you have logs on all of these different devices, and you may have hundreds of routers, you may have hundreds of servers, there's no way a human being is going to have enough time to go into each one of those devices and look through the logs for something they may be hunting down. So what you can do is consolidate the logs together. Fortunately, there's a standardized protocol for taking log information and forwarding it off to a consolidated syslog repository. And that syslog standard really helps. So now that I can, I can put in one single database in my network and tell all my routers, send your log into that database. All my servers, send it into that database. All my firewalls, send it into that database. And then I can do queries on the database. Show me everything that happened between 2 and 3 in the morning. And it shows it for every device. Show me every log entry that has the words Professor Messer inside of them. And you can see every time I logged in and logged off of the network. So it becomes extremely useful in even the smallest environments where you start to have tens and 20 and 30 different devices you can save a lot of time just by consolidating your logs together and then looking in one place whenever you need to start troubleshooting. Let's see what we remember about doing our network monitoring. First question is, what network utility can verify the availability of remote devices? All we're looking to see is, are you there or are you not there? And the network utility for that is a ping. Another question is that an end user is complaining of a slow response time. They may be getting disconnected randomly. That's a problem. So what monitoring tool would really help us in troubleshooting this particular issue? Well, if we recall, we loaded up our Wireshark from Wireshark.org, and that is a packet analyzer. And our last question, what is the standardized format for sharing log information? And if you recall just from that previous slide, it is syslog. Well, that covers the basis for our N10004 exam from Section 4.4, where we've gone through these connectivity, packet sniffing, load testing type functionality so that we can now start monitoring and troubleshooting our network. If you'd like to watch many more Network Plus videos, send me an email, leave a message on our message boards. You can visit our website, freenetworkplus.com. <laughs>